What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Today I want to take a look at some very cool items that were introduced with the Age of Sorcery Chapter 3. Now the recipes for both of these items are unlocked through the journey system. So let's take a look at what journeys you need to do in order to unlock these items. The first one that we're going to look at is Thrall Taker. This is going to give you access to the Purple Lotus Orb. This thing is absolutely amazing. So you can see these steps that you have to go through here place a wheel of pain craft a truncheon craft bindings use the truncheon to knock out a fighter or an archer convert the warrior obtain gruel put gruel on the wheel of pain place the thrall in the world instruct the thrall to follow you instruct the thrall to attack convert a crafter and assign the crafter to a workstation so all of these things are pretty standard for gameplay and training you how to get a thrall and what you can use a thrall for but in return, you get the recipe for the Purple Lotus Orb, and I'm going to show you now what that thing can do. Do me a favor, smash that like button. Let's see if we get this video up to 1,000 likes. So the Purple Lotus Orb is used to knock out thralls. This creates a cloud of gas around the thrall, and it causes consciousness damage to the thrall. Now, you're not just going to use this to knock out a tier 4 thrall. It takes multiple orbs in order to do that. However, I found that in several for Maru, you can actually do that because nothing is aggroed on you. And as long as you don't cause any damage to the thralls, you can actually use these orbs to knock out the NPCs without getting in a fight. So this is something where if you use multiple orbs to knock them out, you can actually do that in this location without getting into a confrontation. Now, one thing I noticed from my testing, it does not matter if you throw multiple orbs. It's not going to do additional concussive damage if you have multiple orbs out there at the same time so my suggestion is to use the orb allow it to work its course and run out before throwing a second orb now one thing that you should know about these orbs is that if you stay in combat with whoever you are trying to knock out or if you are in Sepamaru and they're not in combat the consciousness bar will not start to refill for quite some time. So it's okay to let that orb run out before throwing a second one. If you're in combat, you can throw this orb in a location and it will help you use your truncheon to knock out that enemy. You do want them to be inside the purple gas as much as possible. In the center of the purple gas is the most powerful. And as you get away from the center of the gas, it is less and less powerful so you want to try to keep that thrall in the center of that gas as much as possible you can also line these up and run a loop if you wanted to running thralls through that gas in order to knock them out as well if that's a tactic that you want to take for knocking them out you could do this without using a truncheon at all so there are definitely places where you can use this orb by itself to knock them out and not get into any interactions or any combat. But in the areas where you're going to be in combat, this really is just an additional tool to help you knock out those enemies. I've also put together a really good slaver build. That's what I'm calling it. It's a build that's going to give you a lot of concussive damage and used with these purple lotus orbs. It is really powerful. So watch for that video in the future. And the purple lotus orb is actually crafted on the alchemist bench and you can see it requires a water orb and currently the black lotus flower i don't know if they'll change this to the purple lotus flower at some point in time but that is the recipe for the purple lotus orb the other track in the journey steps that you should follow is the tinkerer track and that's going to give you access to the prying kit. And I'll show you what that does here in a moment. But the steps that you're going to want to go through are unlock the weaponsmith knowledge, access or place a tinkerer's bench, craft a simple repair kit, repair a damaged weapon, unlock the armor smith knowledge, craft a thin armor plating, apply a thin armor plating, craft a simple tool upgrade kit, apply the upgrade to a tool, unlock the fluid press knowledge, access and place the fluid press, craft oil in the fluid press, craft a simple weapon damage kit, apply the damage kit to a weapon. 
So the prying kit is really cool because you're able to remove any attachments that you've put on your weapons, your tools, or your armor. And I'm going to show you an example of that with Cess Truncheon. Now you may know that adding an attachment to a weapon or a piece of equipment reduces the durability of that weapon or equipment. You can see I have three Cess Truncheons here with 750 total durability. However, if I put an attachment on, you can see that durability goes down to 562.5. Now, if I use the prying kit on it, it's actually going to half the amount of durability. It's going to bring it down to 281.2, which is half the durability that it had before. However, you can reapply a different kit on that weapon. And you can see that reapplying that kit actually brought the durability down to 210.9. I feel like maybe the durability loss from using the prying kit is a little bit heavy handed, but personally, I really like the idea of being able to remove those attachments and try something else out. It gives you the ability to not always have to craft a different piece of equipment to see if you like a different kind of attachment for that weapon. So I'm really glad that they add the prying kit. Again, I think it may be a little bit heavy handed with the amount of durability that you lose, especially when you're losing durability each time you apply something to that weapon or that piece of equipment and then to lose durability again by prying it off and then again losing durability by applying something else. But I feel like this is a step in the right Right direction for the game and I'm really excited to see the prying kit available in Conan Exiles. And I want to know in the comment section below, what do you think of these items, the purple lotus orb and the prying kit? Are you excited to see these come to Conan Exiles? I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.